In previous exercises, you tested your VHDL designs using vector waveform files. This graphical method is nice and simple, but may not scale dreadfully well when attempting to test complex and larger designs. It's actually more conventional to write VHDL to test other VHDL. And in fact, we call these test benches. Now, test benches aren't synthesized, they're purely simulated. And that's what we're going to look at now. So we're going to test this MyXOR entity. Now, luckily, Quartus has a facility to get us started. And let's use that. So if you click the Processing tab, Start, Test Bench, Template Writer. Now, that's been created for us. and We can look at it. And you'll see it's put in a special folder. So if you look in simulation, model sim, show all files, you'll see there's a VHT file, VHDL test bench file. Open, and if you wish to find it quickly, add current file to project. We'll see it listed in the files but not in the hierarchy, because again, we're not going to synthesize this. It's purely for testing. In fact, in, in Quartus, all we're going to do at most is edit. If we have a little look at it, before we go piling in, trying to simulate, you'll see roughly what's going on. We have this new entity, MyXOR VHD test, with no inputs or outputs. So the entity has no content. It just is blank and then end. And then we have the architecture for this and you'll see that it actually does a few things you may recognize. Well, it declares some signals which we'll use in a minute and then it declares some components and you'll see what it's done. It's declared a component type MyXOR and this is the device we wish to test. Then inside the VHDL architecture block, after the begin, we see this, some structural VHDL. That's essentially placing my XOR gate and hooking its inputs up to these two signals A and B and its output up to this signal Y. So any changes we make to A and B should be reflected in Y. This here is the instantiation of one of our exclusive OR gates. Next we have a couple process blocks. For combinational logic I'm going to ignore the first one and I'm going to look at the second. It's been labelled always. Now we have a begin and an end and no sensitivity list we just have a wait statement and you'll see what that's for in a minute. So let's put in some test code now. Well, before I start, I'm going to declare a variable called count. And you'll notice I've used unsigned. The reason is I can do basic arithmetic on type unsigned. Next, I want to insert some code, like so. So we've got this variable count. It's a two bit wide variable of typed unsigned. So I set A to count of 1, B to count of 0. Then wait for 20 nanoseconds. Increment count. A to count of 1, B to count of 0. Wait for 20 nanoseconds. Increment it again. Until we get all the way to the end, so it will go 0, 1, sorry, starts at 0. This will set it to 1, 2, 3, and this should set it back to 0 again. And notice that the last statement is just wait and that means wait forever which effectively stops any further activity in this process block. Now before we can use count plus one and unsigned we have to import the right package. It's numeric standard and the test bench looks ready. So what we're doing we're generating input stimulus 00 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So we save that. 
and we're now ready to simulate.